Hi everybody, John here on this Friday, November 10th, 2023. You'll notice I'm wearing a very patriotic shirt because I do love America very much. It's not for the theatrics, but it's very apropos with today. Happy Veterans Day and Veterans Day weekend. I wanna say a salute to service to all those who have served past and present and future, both my family and several friends and, and brothers in the Lord and, and women as well who have served. Thank you for your ultimate sacrifice we would not be able to be here today without it. I also want to give a special acknowledgement to Denise Boland, our show that we did the other night. I thought it was very good and productive, and she asked some great questions, and she's a, a great and calm and loving, experienced interviewer, and I, I very much enjoy collaborating with her. So today's news is going to be a couple of different things, so I'm just going to roll through it. You know how this goes. I talked to David Mahoney yesterday. He is in Portugal, and he informed me that not only was Prime Minister Costa stepping down on Tuesday, but the entire cabinet of Portugal has been arrested. He's actually there, shoes on the ground, and saw it for himself. They actually announced it. And of course the news isn't reporting it, but he's there live seeing it. That just underscores how important things are right now at this critical time and that things are happening, whether we necessarily see it right away or not. Remember, the next week is the deadline for the government shutdown. Let's see if they actually go through with it. I know that there's bills being put in to avoid funding for Ukraine and Israel. And as I put in our Telegram channel, for those of you who subscribe, you see that we source all of our information and we give credit where it is due. And in saying that, 106 House Republicans have already put up a block to keep Kamala Harris from being president. So they already know what's coming and they're building in insulation against that. Uh, this week, uh, the Kremlin announced that the UN will run out of paper to print U.S. dollars. So the printing initiative, or what they call quantitative easing, to print, 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 and kick the can down the road, that's done. Today, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, dumped over 15,385 shares, which amasses a total of $10 million. Think he knows the writing on the wall? Why is he encouraging people to go into asset-backed cryptos? Also earlier this week, you'll note that we put in the group that uh, Jamie Dimon of Chase Bank CEO dumped a million of his shares. So you can see a pattern developing here. Fulton County uh, reports 15,000 ballots are missing in the 2020 election. There's also continuous talks of cyber attacks and solar flares that the mainstream is putting out to let you know that the internet is going to go through a blackout. They're saying weeks to months, I think we know it's probably more likely about 10 days. Okay, this is a subject that we need to discuss. It's the elephant in the room. It's uncomfortable, but it needs to be discussed. So it's going to take a little bit. Just bear with me. I first want to start by saying that no one has it all right. Not me, not you, not any other qualified truthers out there. Now, I've been in this for over 10 years, so I've talked to some people. I have a great team that stands alongside me that's incredibly humble and doesn't want their name announced because they're very modest. I respect that privacy. I've talked to Frank 26 in the past, very nice man, calm, cogent, just what you see on his videos. I don't always agree with him and everything, and he likewise, that's fine. Um, I've also uh, dialogued with the late, great Benny Wilson. For those of you who've been in this movement know who that was. Uh, he passed away, unfortunately, this year. Um, I think it was the same day as my good friend Darren, a.k.a. Mr. Trumptastic, sadly. We know about that. And Benny was a banker. And so he had his own slant. But one of the things he said that I always agreed with is there's going to be landmines to try to trip you up before, during, and after the RV. And he was right about it then, and he's certainly been right about it now. It's aged extremely well. I give him all the credit for that. And of course, my late friend and brother Darren still, the, thankfully he made it to heaven, and that's what continues to give me the most peace and comfort about everything. He did not like being called a guru. He was a truther. Those of you who are continuous fans of his know that's the case. He just wanted to bring the truth to the best of his ability with all the passion and cogency he always delivered. I'm just trying to follow and walk in his footsteps and get us to the finish line the best I can. I've noticed in our community, there's there's a lot of emphasis put on about who's right. I'm sorry, I thought the point of this was to win. I don't care about who's right. If somebody else has it right, fantastic. The point of this is to win and finish the race in lockstep together. Not everybody's right all the time, not everybody's wrong all the time. We're all just trying to get to the truth to the best of our ability. 
in the midst of that effort, there's a lot of confusion and chaos. What I'm working to do is to bring clarity. So as it relates with respect to redemption centers, 800 numbers and NDAs, I'm gonna talk about this right now in detail. I wanna set the record straight. I never said anyone was a liar. Don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say that. I just said they're wrong and I disagree with them. I'm going to tell you today right now why I feel that's the case. I'm going to give you some incontrovertible facts to think about and really take it into your spirit with the Lord and ask him, test him. He will show you. First and foremost, the majority of you bought your currency from a treasury backed exchange dealer. So why would you exchange that at a redemption center? Did it ever occur to you that you're going to be in a bidding war? You're going to have two options. You're going to have the currency exchange centers, and you're going to have the banks. I'm still getting emails from time to time from the currency dealers trying to get me to sell my dinar for a, for a loss because they know what it's worth. If it's not worth anything, why do they want it so badly? So you have to ask yourself that. That's a fact. Second of all, no one, and I mean no one other than the Lord, of course, is going to care more about your well-being than you. So why are you putting your your money and your affairs and your trust in someone else to dictate it and govern it for you? Isn't that what got us in the mess here in the first place? We have this corruption in Washington because we bequeathed our self-governments governance over to a group of corrupt politicians, which you all agree are corrupt or the, the lion's share of them. When you put all of your leadership and all of your faith and all of your responsibilities in the hand of someone else, you're taking the risk um, of them doing it properly. You wouldn't go to your neighbor and say, hey, here's all my bills for the month. Here's the money. Just pay it all and leave what's left on my table and you're done, okay? No. So why would you do that with this? You don't know who you're talking to on the other end of an 800 number. You don't know their background. You don't know their credentials. And the more you share, the more of a risk it is. Isn't it better the devil you know? I've already told you and I've shown you what the banks look like going from retail centers to wealth management centers. They're doing that for this. They've admitted it to me and to my brother, Carl. Here's another fact. Banks are here to make money, right? If they're setting these up to be wealth management centers, wouldn't it make sense that they're doing this for people like us who have it to have us come in? The easier they make it on us to go in, the easier it is for them to get paid. And what do they get paid? a 1% uh, basis point, which equates to about $100,000. I vetted that with Darren as a banker and other bankers to make sure I had that right before I told you. It's it's 1% is $100,000 per transaction. As for taxes, did you pay taxes when you bought the currency? No, you paid an exchange fee. That's the commission, the cost of doing business. That business has to make money like anybody else. This will be no different. Just think critically. Don't think emotionally, but think critically. Okay, so as far as redemption centers and this discussion about military, I've already talked to some of the wealth managers and the manager at my Wells Fargo down the street. They said there would be private security there, some of which are former and current military people. So yes, more than likely military people will be there, but they don't need to be conspicuous about it. They'll just be there privately behind the scenes to make sure everything's covered. Hold your currency, do it yourself, govern yourself. Don't don't take the bait of all these other things. It's not worth the risk. Do I think some of these other um, truthers or gurus are trying to help? Yes, I believe that they believe that this is how it's going to go. I don't know every single one of them. and I don't have the time. I'm too busy doing what I'm doing. But I think there are some good people out there. They just don't have this one right. They believe that they are, and that's fine. But I'm telling you, I believe differently. Don't attack me because I see it differently, and I'm giving you some factual things to sink your teeth into. Questions that you can ask yourself. So I'm giving it to you the best of my ability. I'm sticking my neck out for God's giving people. That's why I started this, and that's why I'll finish it. It's for God's generous people. See, here's the thing, folks. Money doesn't define your character, it reveals it. It makes you more of what you already are. So if you're a giver, you're just gonna be predisposed to giving. If you're a taker, you're gonna keep it for yourself. It's pretty logical. And one more thing, 
Most of you are, I'm sure, are doing this, but ignore these haters and trolls and knuckleheads that come in here and say it's never going to happen and it's a scam. Really? Well, let's debunk that too. Let's shut these people up right off the bat. They never show their face. They don't have any followers. You ever notice a pattern there? They're cowards. They're keyboard warriors. Let's debunk that. If it's a scam, how come the place that sold it to you will buy it back from you? It doesn't even make sense. Think critically, folks. They'll buy it back. Scams don't do that. Scams are a one-way transaction. They take and you never see them again. They fold up like a cheap tent and go out to town like a circus. They're still around. They're treasury backed. You know, and, and one, uh, one last thing, I'm sorry, I do want to add this because this is important. Somebody asked me, how are we going to know then if we don't have 800 numbers or redemption centers or all this stuff? How are we going to know when it happens, folks? I assure you, you will know when it's going to happen. It's going to be plastered all over the internet, all over the Telegram channels when it actually happens. You can check the CBI website, of the, the CBI of the Central Bank of Iraq, cbi.iq or cbi.gov. You can check Forex. Banks have dedicated 800 number hotlines to this so you can know the daily exchange rates. Trust and believe, you will know. I will also let you know when it's really official as I get confirmation. And I always do three checks, as the Bible says, for confirmation. Additionally, and finally, the mainstream media, when you join the World Trade Organization, you're bound by international statutes and laws and codes to disclose that you're revaluing and coming back on the international stage. That's part of the conduct of code of conduct of doing business. The financial mainstream channels will tell you that Iraq has revalued and returned to the international stage. They have to, because 99% of the people don't know anything about this. You're part of the 1%. Don't let anybody fear you or take it away from you, okay? So with that in mind, have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Happy Veterans Day once again to all of you who have served or have families that have served, friends, etc. If there's anything breaking beyond, I'll get back on with you. Otherwise, I will see you next Tuesday, and God bless.